What is happening everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today I have for you guys an exciting unboxing to dig into. Now I'm going to pull this off the screen just a little bit because there's only one way into this box and I have all my information on there. So there we go. Let's see what we have here. And it looks beautiful. So what we have, guys, is the second ever Pena that I've ever handled or owned. So we have a Pena X series here. We got a little sleeve. This does come from Knife Center. And I don't really order much from them anymore. But... There was very limited places that I could actually get this from. So let's see what we have. We have a beautiful microfiber cloth. Uh, they do a great job there at Riot and Pena with the microfiber cloths. They always have a really nice one. So then we get to our knife that is housed in a nice little foam padded protector there. And let's see what we are. Ooh, that, they even have that sealed up in there a little bit. So let's get that opened up. And this thing is immaculate looking. Look at this. Ooh. Beautifully centered. Look at that. Oh. All right, let's take a little zoomy zoom. So we are zoomed in here a little bit. And what we have, guys, this is a Pena collaboration with Javi Garcia. And they came together and put this little guy out. It is called the Paramour. And I have a Pena, I have a Kickstop Flipper, and I've always wanted to try one of Pena's just front flippers. Uh, I'm typically not a huge front flipper fan, but when it comes to some of the absolute best front flippers in the entire game, uh, then that kind of changes my outlook a little bit. So we have almost like a floating backspacer in there. A little mini floating titanium backspacer. I like that pocket clip. That'll be titanium as well. And then I forget if they're calling that. They are calling that carbon fiber. It is. It's Mars Valley fat carbon fiber. And look at that stuff. I think they only did two versions of this as far as I know. Let's give this a little flick. Oh, yes, look at that. And guess what, guys? <clears throat> this bad boy is coming in CPM M4, not M390, M4. Oh, look at that. Oh. And see, the way Pena does his knives, they're not the biggest knives in the world and typically not my preference, but I knew based off the kickstop flipper that I have that the way the handle is designed, it's almost like a traditional in a sense where it's not a big knife. You know, it's not uh, it's not like a, a cold steel or anything like that. But the way that they're designed, you can get a full purchase on this handle, be comfortable on there. And you have a nice amount of blade left over. This really reminds me of a modern traditional take. And I don't know if that's what Pena typically goes for, but that's really what a lot of his designs remind me of. And uh, I think they are just executed so well. Uh, I love a lot of Pena's designs. There's a couple that I've missed out on. Uh, in the past, and this is one that I just, I didn't want to miss out on. It was coming in M4. Uh, I don't have a ton of M4, and like I said, I don't have a bunch of Pena's either. So this will be the second Pena. We have nice lock up there. Uh, looks about 20% or so. 
We have no blade play, nice and solid. They give you a nice little chamfer there on the lock bar. Whew. Snappy little detent. This thing is just beautiful. Look at that. And then we have a nice machined satin finish on this guy. The grind lines are outstanding. Let me see if I can get a little better light on this guy. So there we go. We get the other studio light on, and that definitely changes the game for these. Uh, so this was a very limited run. There, You can only get these on Pena's website, Knife Center, and then I believe maybe one other place you could get these. And so very limited. And as far as I know, this version is completely sold out. Uh, at least as far as I know. I know Knife Center didn't have them anymore, and I believe I saw that Pena's website was also out of this version. I believe he did, I think it was like a white and black fat carbon, so it was like a white storm fat carbon, I think, or something like that. But this is actual name brand fat carbon, and it is some outstanding looking stuff. Uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful knife. This is definitely a gent style knife here. Uh, not, you know, for me, this will be a just day to day gent user going to be my nicey nice type of carry. This ain't something I'm going to beat on or anything like that. Man, that thing is snappy. And then already it is starting to break in nicely and once you figure out where to place your fingers you'll be able to do the old rollover and the jimping is fine enough you have that Pena style jimping that with a little bit of practice you'll be able to do the index rollover very easily it's taking a little bit of practice but you can get it done and then there is Javi Garcia's little maker's mark right there. Oh, man, this thing is nice, guys. Uh, a perfect little gent EDC knife. So we know Riot does a fantastic job typically on their builds. And they do a great job on their edges, on their finishing work, on the the fit and finish all the way around. Uh, typically, Riot is probably the kings when it comes to production knives. Now, there are other companies that are closing that gap on Riot, but I think Riot still, you know, they still maintain that uh, number one position. But there are some companies that <clears throat> are really catching up to them as far as fit and finish and build quality and who makers are going to. But uh, like I said, I think Riot is still the top dog when it comes to their production knives. This is going to be a great knife for just day-to-day -day tasks. You'll be able to get right up on that edge, nice controlled cuts. You'll be able to get right up on that tip. Oh man, this is just, this will be perfect. Not that I'm going to use this as a work knife or anything like that, but it's it's good to know that the more premium knives that you get, uh, they're still going to be very functional. And I think this one will do the job very well. Yeah. Yeah, that's got a nice edge on it. I just wanted to double check that. Sometimes I just cannot cut, and other times knives are not sharp. But this one is feeling pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Let's see what this looks like in the pocket. Keep in mind, guys, this is just a unboxing, first impressions, first look. 
and as your typical uh, milled clip will be, you'll have a little bit poking out of the pocket there. Nothing uh, too tremendous though. That will allow you to get a little bit of grip on there and pull this guy out no problem and give him a little flick open. Ah, man, this is uh, just really nice. I, I don't have my other Pena out here, or I would bring him out. He's uh, in a different case. But uh, the kickstop flipper really opened my eyes to Pena's and how nice they are, how well finished they are, how great of a design it is. Uh, if there are any of these available in either of the versions, I'll link them down in the description. Uh, I'm going to guess there is not many, if any, left. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, there we go. This thing has, for a front flipper, it has a pretty, pretty good detent on him. Uh, it's not overly strong, though, to where, you know, this is still very satisfying to flick open uh but it's not overly hard to the point where you you it's not fun to open it yeah once you figure out where to place your fingers you can do the rollover i love how they put the carbon fiber on the lock side as well that just i i, I don't mind most times when we only have it on one side, but I really prefer it to be on both sides, even if they do something like this, where it's not one solid piece, but they do just a couple separate inlays of it, and it just looks phenomenal. The clip side looks basically as good as the show side. Oh, I guess, yeah, that's not one continuous run either. So that's a couple different... Uh, inlays there it just looks so clean and i'm just now noticing this has no hardware on the show side and then we have our exposed clip screw our pivot screw and then i'm not sure what's going on there with the lock bar that is different and interesting. It looks like that's pinned almost. And do we have any? No, we have no internal milling in there. Uh, not that it needs it. This is very light, very, very light. Uh, just curious and looking around. We have a nice stop pin there. Whew. I was trying not to think about this showing up, and it wasn't supposed to come until either tomorrow or Saturday, I think, and it actually showed up today, so that is awesome. I was, uh, Knife Center's not known to be the quickest shippers. Sometimes they do well, and then sometimes it takes them two or three days to get it shipped out. Uh, it only took them like two to, you know, a day and a half to get it shipped out, and then it moved pretty quickly. Uh, one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of ordering from Knife Center, sometimes they can take their good old time, and they don't really add anything in for the unboxing experience, really. They don't throw any stickers or anything like that. And as, you know, as uh, stupid as that may sound, SMKW, DLT, REC, uh, White Mountain Knives used to do it. If you ask for stickers in the comment section there, they'll send them. But all them companies load you up with stickers or patches or, or whatever it might be. And if I can order through one of them retailers, that is typically what I do. But uh, in the case of this Pena, we were very limited at where we could uh, pick one of these up. But uh, definitely happy to add this guy into the collection. Uh, already breaking in beautifully. Even as lightweight as this blade is, it'll drop past half and then just two little shakes and it's already going home. Once this gets broken in, it'll be just a, you know, it'll pretty much drop to here 
and then you can give it like a little snippety snap and it'll go all the way home. You'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think of this Pena. Do you have any Penas? Uh, or is Pena not really your style? Uh, that's okay too. Not everything is for everyone, but there's always something for everyone. That's what I say anyway. Uh, that's my little motto. Not everything is for everyone, but there's always at least something for everyone out there. And uh, I'm a huge fan of pocket knives in general. It doesn't matter if it's a classy front flipper jet knife like this, or if it's a hard use off grid, you know, or a hard use cold steel, or if it's a lightweight bug out or whatever it might be. Uh, I'm just a huge fan of knives in general. And if they are executed well and still maintain a little bit of function, and even sometimes I'll pick something up that isn't the most functional uh, because I like the design or I like the uniqueness of it. Uh, so, and these Penas kind of fall in the class of not something I typically buy, uh, not something I typically carry a lot, uh, but because of how nice they are how gentleman style they are you know this isn't going to be something i'm going to use as a carpenter and you know get it all messed up uh this is not something that i typically will carry to work so it's going to get very uh circumstantial carry but definitely going to get carried get used uh this thing is absolutely stunning, and I love the profile. It's so slender, so slim, just a, a great execution, great design. And uh, we'll be doing a full in-depth overview of this guy here very soon. We will go over all the specs, go over all the details, try to find out a little bit of history on the knife, if there is any. Uh, but that'll wrap this one up, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it when you do that. It helps the videos, helps the channel out. And if you're new to the channel or you've been here before and you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below the video. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, I will catch you on the next one. And thank you for watching.